I think I'm live. <laughs> Hi guys, um, it's Meg here with Bon Malloy and um, doing office hours today. Stephanie is uh, on a job. So I'm super excited that Amy V. Cooper is going to be joining me here in a minute. Um, Amy is a uh, photography rep. She's got just years and years of experience as a photographer and um, uh, a photo rep and uh, an art director. She's she's just in all different kinds of things. And um, we, uh, we love her. And so we're super excited to have her on as our guest for office hours today. Um, so we hope um, that you guys that uh, are on the newsletter saw the email that she was going to be with us. We also, you know, posted the stories and stuff. So um, because of Amy's like vast, you know, business experience, we're, we're super excited to field um, more of your business oriented questions from the community. So i um, super excited to have her. Looks like she is here just for a second or give me just a second. There. Okay. Here comes Amy. Hi guys. So glad to see you. There's Amy. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hi. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so excited to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. Um, we've got, got some people coming in already. I think they're excited to hear what you have to say. <laughs> no pressure. Right. No pressure. I know. <laughs> um, I was just I was just telling the folks that were tuning in that you know we sent out our our newsletter announcing that you were going to be on and it was it was kind of fun like writing a little blurb about you because you've just got so much depth of experience and um, knowledge and stuff like that that you you know share with your clients and stuff and um, and you've just launched your commercial photography mo master class which I've started dipping into and it is so fantastic um, oh, so I don't know I'd love for you to just kind of like talk a little bit about like your background and stuff and like how you got into what you're doing now. And then um, let's definitely talk about the class on too. Yeah. So let's see. I started studying fashion design in college and this was when I lived in Louisiana. So I didn't LSU. know either of those things. So <laughs> funny. I've known Amy for years, guys. She's yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have a degree in fashion design. Um, oh my gosh. And while I was studying that, I started taking photography electives and immediately fell in love with photography because it was so much more immediate. Um, mm. Fashion design requires a lot of patience and a lot of attention <laughs> to detail. <laughs> um, so I had assumed that when I finished my bachelor's that I would move to New York and study at FIT. But once I got into photography, well, I still kind of had the same plan. I still wanted to be in New York City. So I ended up getting into Parsons and I studied photography there for about a year before I realized how much money it cost. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. And I got a fantastic internship at El Decor magazine. And oh, well, still one of my favorites. Yeah. And I was working under Quintana Rudon, who was incredible. She, she's the daughter of Joan Didion. Oh, amazing. yeah. Amazing experience. Of course, at the time, I had no idea who Joan Didion was, <laughs> but now I'm like kicking myself. Um, <laughs> so Quintana taught me so much. And then after that, I went on to work at MTV Networks. So I was the photo editor for MTV.com for, I want to say seven years. And wow. I also assigned myself a lot of projects. So <laughs> so major she, perk. <laughs> major perk. And I just did, uh, I just did an IG live with the most recent photo editor of MTV. So we were comparing that. That's it was, awesome. Yeah, it was hilarious. It's in my, it's in my feed if you want to see it. So I shot a lot of celebrity portraits and live music there. And then I decided, oh, so I quit to go freelance right when the, right when the economy was crashing in like 2008. Like 2008. <laughs> yep. That's right when I graduated um, from photography school and moved. And I was like, I don't know anybody. This is a great time to like right? be starting a business. Mm. And I also got really sucked into that presidential election. Ended Oof. up moving to Texas because I have family here and started working in the advertising industry as an art buyer. And I worked for a couple of different advertising agencies as an art buyer and a digital asset manager. And I was working on accounts like 
Microsoft, Coca Cola, UPS, Seven Eleven, JC Penney, huge. huge, Allstate Insurance, Capital One. So again, really incredible experience working in that field. And then in 2016, I decided that there was some bigger calling for me, and I wasn't sure what it was, but I knew it wasn't licensing stock photography for, you know, banks. <laughs> <laughs> for the so rest I, of your life, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I started my own photo agency um, called Trove That must Artisan. have been around the time that I met you, right? Because I met you through um, yeah. Tanya Quintanilla, yeah, yeah. who was yeah. like an Austin-based, like amazing fashion and beauty yeah. photographer who has since moved to New York. But yeah, um, yeah tell us about Trove. So yeah, follow TQ Photo. She's amazing. Yeah, beauty she's photographer. incredible, guys. Yeah. Love her. Um Okay, so I started Trove, which was the first photography agency in the United States to support a roster of all female photographers. I was very proud of that. I started the Diversify yeah. the Lens campaign to um, so increase, love that. increase the awareness of the underrepresentation of women in photography. I was just reading Elle magazine last night, and I can't, I can't enjoy magazines anymore because I'm just mm. like male photographer, male photographer, where are the women, where are the black people? Where are the women? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, and it wasn't just photographers, right? It was also it like hair stylists. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hair and makeup. Yeah. I had an illustrator. I had a hair and makeup. It was incredible. I had ended up branching out to New York and Los Angeles and Dallas. Um, it was a great experience and it really kind of, the hair and makeup thing really took over because oh, okay. um, there's really no fashion happening in Austin, Texas, but there is a lot of hair and makeup with South by Southwest and the film festivals. So that was incredible. But then I kind of realized, okay, I'm really a glorified receptionist for a hair and makeup artist. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew I still had bigger things to do. And I loved so much like still cons like through my whole career consulting on the side with photographers and that yeah. really is my passion so I was like I need to just focus on my passion so I've been consulting full-time for I would say more than a year now probably um and I've really kind of developed a system for consulting with photographers that I feel like is so strong and so yeah, that's how I got here. And, and I realized over the past few months that I was giving photographers the same advice over and over. Like everyone I work with needed the same advice. Yeah. And I was like, how can I just like put this all down in one place for everyone to access? And that's why I decided to create the masterclass. Um, because I wanted to not have to repeat myself every day. <laughs> 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 Which, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love working with everyone. I'm obsessed. No, with but it. clearly there was like a need in the community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was, I mean, I was doing it so much. I was like, wait, did I, yeah. whenever I would get on a call, I'd be, I'd be like, did I already say that? Did I already say that? Because I probably <laughs> said it the day before. Um, so I created the masterclass, but also I wanted something that was just packed full of valuable information that I could like spread far and wide for a low price. So the class is about half of what it would cost for a one-on-one -on -one with me. And you get literally everything in my brain. So, awesome. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> That's why when I did you, now. you launched it like really recently, right? Like within the last like two weeks or something. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I, um, I worked with Amy. Amy has done like portfolio reviews for me when I've been, you know, faculty. So she's, um, you know, seen a bunch of work from my students and always given such like amazing advice. And then when I've hit little like beats in my career, when I've like, you know, needed a refresh, like she and I've sat down and gone over like my website and stuff. So I am so excited. I've only dug into like the first module, but already, I mean, I love I love that it's so packed with information, like no matter where you are in your career, whether you're like starting out or whether you're like deeper in, like it really is full of like so much great info already. Yeah, it's great for any emerging to mid-career photographers, I would say there's so much in there. And even if you just kind of, you're, you've been in it for a long time, but you're trying to reinvent yourself or you just gotten to a point where word of mouth is no longer working for you, you need to start mm. marketing. It's a great, um, it's a great course for that. And then also people who 
maybe already experienced with re what I call retail photography. So mm -hmm. weddings, family portraits, things like that, but they want to transition into doing more editorial and commercial work. The perfect course for those people. Um, and there's more than 50 downloads in the course. So templates, resources, homework. I, I couldn't, I didn't even realize that until I uploaded the course to the platform that I had created more than 50 downloads. <laughs> and I was like, man, y'all are getting spoiled with this class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, oh, we've got, um, we've got a question here from, let's see, Ambition Fashion Magazine. When you're finished, would you please reach out to me? It's talking to you, Amy, as I'm Ooh. seeking an artist rep with lineage um, in the arts. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Ambition Fashion Magazine. DM Amy V. Cooper. Um, <laughs> that sounds awesome. Um, so tell people where they can find the, um, the masterclass. So you can go to the link in my bio, it's, or you can just go to my website, amyvcooper.com. <laughs> Amy <B. laughs> it's front and center, or you can just send me a DM, or you can DM Meg. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I we'll want to share up on this. the lawyer, yeah. Yeah, I want to share this video with my followers, so will you yeah. tell them about you really quickly? Sure, yeah. So, hey guys, <laughs> I'm Meg Malloy. Um, I'm a photographer here in Austin. I do um, mostly interiors and architecture, but for the past few years, I've been doing a little bit more like um, corporate portraiture and that kind of stuff. Um, and I am half of Bon Malloy photography. Um, I um, graduated with a master's degree in photography in 2008, which is what I was talking about, like how I moved to Austin and got started not knowing anybody. Um, but I had... I had just finished up my master's degree in photography, so I started teaching, and obviously that was like over 10 years ago, and I've been teaching ever since, and I love it. I teach, um, I teach a lot of Photoshop classes. I taught, you know, lighting classes, food photography, architectural photography. I taught a fashion photography class once. It's not my forte, but I love it so <laughs> much, so I just kind of like pulled in all the resources I could possibly think of. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love I love teaching people, you know, how to use their cameras better, how to understand light, how to compose. And so um, Stephanie, um, Stephanie Bond of Bon Malloy, she's the stylist in our little team. She's got, oh my gosh, like 15, 18, 20 years or something like that of experience styling. Mm -hmm. So she and I team up and we teach workshops that are all about photography and styling. So you can kind of learn a little bit of both. If you're a stylist and you just need to show off your portfolio or if you're a photographer and you need to improve your styling, we can try and hit, hit all those fronts. Yeah. And, and um, we just photographers to you, especially since you all launched the food photography course, because yes. now there's so many photographers wanting to pivot into product and food. <laughs> yeah. The stuff where you can do like smaller teams. Yeah. Yeah. Cause COVID has changed the world. <laughs> yeah. The way we're working now is very different. Um, yeah. Um, oh, but, um, uh, you were doing portfolio reviews, right? That's like how you were meeting some of the like new photographers. Yes. So I do my own one-on-one -on -one portfolio reviews through my website, but I also just did some with ASMP and today is actually the last day. If anyone's watching and they're interested to sign up for the portfolio reviews for the Palm Springs photo festival, which is online this year. Um, today's the deadline to sign up for portfolio reviews and I will be doing four days of reviews for oh, wow. Palm Springs. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> How long is each like one-on-one? -on -one? Each review is 20 minutes. And do you get like little breaks in between? I think we get like five minutes. <laughs> it's insane. Um, but I just got my second schedule and it's, it's not the entire day, which I'm glad. Okay. At first, yeah. I was like, give me, a, give me as many as you can give me. <laughs> and then after doing the, like, I think I did 10 ASM, ASMP reviews on one day with maybe a 20 minute break. And I was just like exhausted. <laughs> yeah. But I yeah, love I've it done... so much. Oh, I know. It's so fun for, um, so I teach at Austin community college and at ACC we do, um, we do portfolio reviews at the end of every semester and it's, it's like that. Yeah. It's like two days, 20 minutes per student in that instance, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a good like five or six hours and it's, it is it's so fun and inspiring and it's so great to just like, 
you know, encourage people and, um, you know, see what talent is emerging. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it can be a long day. Um, Heather was asking, what are they looking for? And I think she's referring to the Palm Springs portfolio review signups. I don't think, I mean, you just sign up to say like, Hey, I want to sit down with this particular person and have them look at my work. Right. And mm -hmm. if it's online, I mean, the beauty of that is that you don't have to print your, your portfolio. You can do it. I don't know. So what were you seeing? I'd actually love to, to hear about that. So what were you seeing? Um, like doing the ASMP portfolio reviews Were people just doing like, PDFs or like slideshows or like what were they so what were they sending with ASMP it was like you can show your work however you want to so some people had created a special gallery page on their website that was kind yeah. of a private page and I could scroll through that um, a couple of people were just like here's my website look at it um, <laughs> and then I've done also I did a portfolio review roulette a couple of weeks ago. That's right. Just to practice for myself as well. Um, and then some people had created portfolios with like magazine publishing software. So you were, you were oh, flipping like a magazine. There was yeah. a, there's issue, but there's also yeah. uh, something called Yum Yumpy. You can see oh. it. You can see it on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so I have seen people do it with PDFs, which I actually like. Yeah, what's your what's your preference? You know, it really depends on it really depends depends on your website template. So mm -hmm. if it's easier for me to see a full size image, if it's easy for me to see a full size image on your website, go for it. Create create um also, I love talking about marketing and I love judging people's websites, so yeah. I'm happy to see a website if you're just meeting with an editor, I would actually say create a PDF and then just upload that PDF to your Dropbox and send them the link. Cause it's actually really easy to flip through a PDF okay. in Dropbox. Um, but yeah, I mean, whatever platform you're most comfortable with. Yeah. That's kind of the, the funny thing, you know, with it all being online. Cause I think the expectation, you know, if you're going to the Palm Springs photo, photo festival if you're going to any of those like in-person photo festivals and you're doing an in-person portfolio review I think the expectation is still usually a print portfolio I think that has changed a little bit like you know with the advent of you know iPads and stuff like that like tablet portfolios can be something but I don't know I still really love just the tactile experience of flipping through the pages yes. so yeah with the whole you know environment changing and having to do mm -hmm. it all online like that's not you know, that experience and also the experience of like laying them all out on the table, like if they're loose prints, you know, and talking about sequence and, you know, seeing them all out and being able to talk about, you know, strength and room for improvement and stuff like that. It's just, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, in my limited experience during the portfolio reviews at the school. Yeah, it's just, um, I don't know, it's kind of changing things a little bit. But um, yeah. just a shout out to portfolio reviews. They are an awesome just professional practice. Yes. You know, just to just to have people looking at your body of work, seeing what you're up to, you know, getting mm -hmm. ideas, getting tips on where to take it, who to show it to. Mm -hmm. And even yeah. if it's online, if you can hear someone's voice or look into someone's eyes, you're developing trust with that person just by being physically present with them rather than, you know, trying to email someone. I think it's important. I think it's so important because people feel like they start start to know you a little bit. Any yeah. chance, yeah, you can get to do a portfolio review. I would say go for it. And with the with the Palm Springs, um, I need to look at it. But um, do you know if there's um, are you is there a fee for the portfolio review? I would assume so, huh? Yes, I'm not sure what it is. You pay per review or maybe it's like a five pack. I don't know how it is, but yeah. yeah, I think you are paying for it. I'm not sure if it's cheaper this year because it's online, but I know the festival itself, I want to say it's maybe even half price and oh, to be able great. to see all of these lectures and symposiums online. Yes. There's some good stuff. Yeah. I, um, I got to go in 2017 to the festival and I did a workshop with Peter Lindbergh. It was <gasps> amazing. Exactly. It was amazing. If you guys don't know Peter Lindbergh, he has passed away. He passed away last year. I was yeah. so heartbroken because he was one of the most just kind and like encouraging spirits I've ever been around. 
and he's just like this um, he was one of the like top fashion photographers in the world he's you know he has done like countless covers his work is absolutely gorgeous yeah. he's really known for doing like black and white fashion portraits like a or fashion photography like a ton for like Italian Vogue and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff Anyway, that was just such a, like, life-changing experience. I loved it so much. But I didn't take advantage of doing portfolio reviews when I was there because it was expensive. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. very expensive. So, um, but yeah, so portfolio reviews, I know, really, really great idea. So if any of you guys are interested in that, well, again, ask your, um, if you're just tuning in, you know, pose your questions in the, um, <laughs> in the, um, in the chat and we'll uh we'll try to address those um oh cj was asking what's his name again it's peter lindberg l-i-n-d-b-e-r-g-h um yeah and like i said he's he's passed away but um man his work you will recognize it like yeah. if, you, if you look at fashion at all i think yeah you like know, once 90s you start looking. supermodel black and white that's yes. the one. Um, yeah, like the first cover to... of American Vogue that um, that Anna Wintour um, was the editor for. I think he shot that. So he's been mm -hmm. around. I mean, yeah, he was, I mean, he was, I guess, in his 70s. And he'd been shooting for decades. He was probably, like, in my top three biggest inspiration when I was in college. Oh, wow. Peter Lindbergh, Ellen Von Unworth. Oh, yeah. Gilles ben Simon. Mm -hmm. What about you? Who are your top? Um, oh, Sally I, Mann. Oh yes, Sally Mann for sure. I love um, I love Tim Walker, like oh. which is kind of funny because it's yeah. so like whimsical, which is so just like not my style. But maybe that's why I'm so drawn to it is because I'm like, oh, I can never do that. I just love, I don't know. I just love the look of it. Um, uh, Nick Knight, I really love his work. Brigitte Lacombe, like she didn't always mm -hmm. do like a ton of fashion, but like a lot of like beautiful portraits. Um, one of my favorites lately, well, two, Julia Noni and um, Camila Cron. Um, I love both Ooh. their work. They just do, like, really fantastic colors and shadows and, yeah. So <laughs> and when I was in school, I loved, um, I loved Michael Thompson. He was a Brooks grad. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I just, I loved his stuff. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what other questions do people have? It seems like there were a few questions about um, the portfolio reviews and stuff. I was, um, I get this question all the time. Early students find the term art buyer kind of confusing. Like they don't mm -hmm. totally understand like what that mm -hmm. role is when it comes to, you know, getting um, commercial work. So um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about maybe. Yeah. And you talk about this in your class about the vocabulary. Yes. Um, ooh, yes. Somebody was saying. Uh, oh, Patrick Marshall, yeah, yes. Also, you know, yeah. very, very right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so yeah, buyer. let's talk. Yeah, art buyer versus photo editor versus art director. Like, right. I'd love to kind of break that down for people. Right. So, in the first module of my master class, you there is a glossary that you can download that explains all these titles. So, love it. art buyer is generally a term that you hear in the advertising world. So an art buyer essentially is like a photo editor. And I feel like with all of the motion that's coming up, that the title photo editor is now more visual director. So when you look at magazine mastheads, you might see photo editor or you might see visual director. And within the advertising world, they call them art buyers. Mm -hmm. Um, because, well, I mean, it really is very similar. It, and it kind of depends on the agency. But the art buyer is the person who uh, organizes the licensing of image, motion, sound assets for the clients. So, and they also, they also do portfolio reviews. If So, let's say... Uh, there's a campaign that's coming up and the creative director decides what kind of creative they want to do for a client. Then they'll go to the art buyer and say, you know, who do you know who can do this kind of photo shoot or who do you know who can do this kind of illustration? And the art buyer will think of photographers that they know and pass it over to the creative director for them to choose. And the art buyer will also be in charge of getting the bids in and kind of coordinating. It's like the liaison between the photographer and the creative department. And art buyers also sometimes in advertising do digital asset management. 
Again, they also mm -hmm. license stock photography, motion, animation, illustration. Um, you know, I was working with uh, voiceover talent, so all kinds of different things. And sometimes the art buyer title is art producer. That's another mm. title that you'll that Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. <laughs> and but um, not all agencies have an art buyer. Sometimes it's the producer right. that does that work, and sometimes it's the creative director. And it seems like more and more agencies are kind of hiring that out. So you'll mm -hmm. see, like, um, independent art buyers that are, like, contractors within the agency instead of, like, full-time positions. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. CJ was just asking, is it like an agent? So it's not, it's not really so much like an agent, like an a agent might, might promote your work to an art buyer. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, if you don't have an agent, there's no reason why you can't approach art buyers, right? right. Um, you know, you just kind of have to figure out how that agency works. Because yeah, they're going to have slightly different titles. And their roles might be like slightly different. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. essentially, like you're looking for the person within the agency that hires photographers. Right. Um, and you can just go to LinkedIn and read their description of their job to see if it if it says that they hire photographers or produce photo shoots. And that will let you know if those are people you can be in touch with. That's one of the great things. So, you know, Amy just mentioned that she um, includes a glossary of like all those terms. I feel like that's definitely worth the price of admission because that kind of stuff can be so inscrutable and intimidating. But uh -huh. it's just a matter of like knowing, you know, who to send your stuff to. Um, we had a question. Um, don't art buyers purchase or commission an artist's work? Um, I mean, so the title art buyer can also be in, in, it can be in different industries. So you can have an art buyer who commissions fine art for sale to clients. Like, let's say you have a company who has a really big office and they need artwork for their office to hang on the walls. That's another way that term can be used, but we're kind of speaking to the title art buyer in terms of advertising agencies. But yes, there are art buyers, you know, can be in, in different agencies in different areas, yeah. with different roles, different um, tasks. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of, you know, one thing that you break down in your class and one thing that I, you know, kind of have to teach my students when they're, you know, trying to navigate, you know, getting into business for yourself, like, you know, you're essentially going to be self-employed if you're going to be a photographer for the most part. So, you know, navigating the difference between editorial work and advertising work, I think can be, again, a little intimidating, a little confusing, because even then there's like a handful of terms that, that indicate the person you want to get your work in front of, right? So if it's right. at the agency, it's usually going to be the art buyer. You want to get some kind of relationship going so they know who you are. They mm -hmm. know you're out there. They know what you can do. They know what your style is. So that, you know, when that job comes along and they're like, oh, you know, I need, I need a food photographer that can, you know, really work with, I don't know, drinks or whatever. You, they know that you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So um, how about the editorial side? Do you want to break that down a little bit? Sure. So editorial, if you just in general want to catch the attention of a, a magazine or a blog, you would reach out to the photo editor or the visual director. Kind of, again, you have to look at the masthead. But that's the great thing about editorial. They almost always have a masthead. So it's, they're a lot easier to find. Um, yeah. And the masthead, like just in magazine terms, like flip through like the first like 10 or 15 pages and you'll either find like a full page or like a little half page and it just mm -hmm. lists like starting mm -hmm. with the publisher, editor-in-chief, and it's going to go through, like, mm -hmm. you know, their, um, is it called the editorial department when it's talking about writing, mm -hmm. and then it's art department for everything mm -hmm. that photographers are interested in. So just look for who's in the art department. Yeah, and you can just Google, like, X Magazine Masthead, and you'll, mm -hmm. and it's usually easy to find. So, so that's who you want to reach out there, but also reach out to the photo assistants, reach out to the photo researchers, reach out to the interns, let everyone know, like get them from all sides. But <laughs> if you have a, if you have a photography project that's finished, that you want to pitch a completed project, you also want to pitch that to the regular editors. So hmm. let's say you just did a makeup story with your makeup artist and you want to pitch it to Allure magazine. You want to send that pitch to the beauty editors. Look for people who write about the subjects that you have shot 
and send it to them as well because sometimes those editors can can have a say in that as well um <clears throat> We had a question. How do you find their emails? Like, is it good to like just search for them through LinkedIn or yeah, what's yeah, your tip I signed there? Up yeah, for my course to get those. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you can find them. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely um, that's a little that's a little trick, and you definitely want to check that out because yeah, that can also be like a tricky part of figuring out how to how to get your stuff out there. I remember. So when I was still in grad school, I interned at um, Santa Barbara Magazine. It was like a local magazine. It was lifestyle. And I interned with the art director. And I remember, you know, not to discourage anybody, but like the first day, um, she showed me the pile of like promo pieces that she got like on a regular basis, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and I was the intern, but she was like, pick out a handful that you think are really cool. You know, so I'm, you know, Amy's not wrong. Like if there's an intern like listed on the masthead, why not? Like, you know, send them, send them an email and be like, Hey, I just sent in a promo piece. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, and these days with everyone getting so bare bones and people getting furloughed, like it could be that intern making that decision. Like you don't know, get on everybody's yeah. radar. Yeah. And plus they'll be so excited to have something addressed <laughs> to them. <laughs> yeah, because they're interning in a magazine because they want to, you know, they want to be editor in chief someday. They want to be art director yeah. someday. Yeah. And I just interviewed, I think we were talking about this earlier, the, the woman from MTV who is the most recent editor. And she was yeah. talking about how they were so excited to get mail. And I was like, <laughs> photographers, please hear this. There are people who are excited to get your <laughs> Like Photo editors and art buyers, we love to look at photography and that's what we do all day long that is our passion so some people are like no I throw it all in the trash but other people are like yes the mail's here <laughs> I can't remember which magazine it was there used to be one or maybe it was a website but they would do like they would um they would do portraits of like art directors and art buyers and photo editors desks you know so you could kind yeah. of see um and it's kind of related to the um uh, promos I keep or like, you know, a photo editor, um, does the, my folder the whole promo. Over here. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Do you want um, me to get it? Yes. Let's see it. Um, Proof that a photo editor saves these things. Yeah. Right. I'm going to read through a few of the questions. We've got a couple more that came in. Do any of the bigger publications work with photographers outside, oop, oh, yeah. outside of, what does that say? 20 years oh Ellie. oh my gosh look at that so these are like years the creme favorite. de la creme yeah um yeah we keep these it's like artwork i love it um so we've got one person that seems pretty interesting because she was asking um do the bigger publications work with photographers outside of la or new york and um how to like kind of break through because it is true the publications kind of will, will get in a not a rut, but like, you know, they will get in the habit of hiring the same people. Like you'll, if you, if you pay attention to magazines and bylines, you will start seeing the same names appear for, you know, for a while. Like, so your mm -hmm. magazines do, you know, really like a handful of photographers and work with them a lot. So I guess her question is kind of like, how do you break into that? Like, how do you make, um, you know, how do you, well, how do you get into that circulation? If the person who is asking that question can give me a more specific um, like what niche you're in. So it really kind of depends. But yes, magazines do have kind of their own bookmarks of people in different cities. And when I was working as an art buyer, well, the answer is yes, absolutely. We work with photographers everywhere. When I was at MTV, I had to hire someone in New Orleans. I had to hire someone in Los Angeles, Miami, Paris. Um, it's usually the bigger cities, to be honest, but you never know. It kind of depends on your niche. Is this food? Is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's just shooting yeah. food. Because food can be anywhere. Yeah. Food can be anywhere. And, um, yeah, I have a food photographer client right now who's getting incredible work out of New York, who lives in Austin. Um, and, yeah, absolutely. So... And I think that's also why it's so important for photographers to, on their contact pages, be very specific about where they are. Mm. Um, that's something that I tell so many of my photographers, 
say where you are because they might have something happening there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, we've, we've talked, well, um, I don't think you and I have talked that much about ASMP. You were talking about how you just did some portfolio reviews for ASMP. I was just kind of thinking about the fact that there are, um, you know, so let's say you don't have a rep and let's say you are kind of a little bit like smaller, but you want a little bit more exposure. There are kind of, um, collectives, um, like ASMP is a professional organization where you can, you know, put your work onto their website to, you know, hopefully get a little bit more attention when, yeah, like photo editors in other parts of the country are looking for a photographer in your city. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, there's like wonderful machine and like found mm -hmm. folios and that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. What's your, what's your, what's your thinking on, on those for getting a little bit more, you know, broader exposure when you're, you know, just on your own? Yeah, I say go for it. Do a lot of research. Again, it depends on what niche you're in and what location you're in. And also as a part of my course, you get the full report. It's like consumer reports on photo hey. directories. <laughs> and um, so there are certain directories that I will specifically recommend to people based on their niche and their location. So back in the day before we had the internet, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the I, dark was looking, ages. <laughs> I was looking at the book and oh I loved the book oh my and gosh book. so before yeah. like if I needed to find someone in a different state um, I was looking at directories and then when I was a photo editor at a magazine it really was more word of mouth so I feel like a lot of these directories are very commercial yes. with um, with editorial might be a little bit different um, but then when I was working as an art buyer in advertising, I would also look at Wonderful Machine, especially mm -hmm. if I need someone in a specific city because I have so many different cities yeah. represented there. Um, and then very rarely I would look at others like Ad Edge or Production Paradise or Workbook Online. Um, yeah. There's so many now and they all have they all have different things that they offer. And I feel like this model is evolving so quickly, which is great. And I think a lot of it is taking over what traditionally has been done by reps. So. Oops. Oop, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My phone is like, it's been online okay. too long. You need to get off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are some directories that will get you portfolio reviews. There are some directories that will help you bid, help you do estimates. Yes, they will do yes. portfolio reviews. Um, yeah. So there's all different kinds of bells and whistles. Um, if you, I mean, DM me if you're thinking about a directory and you're not sure which one's right for you, or you can, um, you can find that, um, that mm. report in my oh, course. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, or Heather got a couple of other questions. So um, she's asking, so as a food photographer, she was asking about how to get connected with somebody who might be writing a cookbook. Um, and then um, there was also a question about the difference between the approach from a traditional rep. Oh, yeah. I mean, in my experience, the thing with, you know, one of the kind of collectives is that you're not necessarily going to be like pushed you know, specifically for what you do, you're more just going to have a broader reach because you're, mm -hmm. because you're on their website. So it's right. not, it's not somebody out there like shopping your stuff around, really trying to like hustle mm -hmm. to get you work. So, and again, that yeah. depends on the directory. So yeah, if, if you're on workbook, for example, you're just going to be on a directory where, you know, our buyers are looking for people by category or by location. So it just increases your chances of being found. Um, and I think, um, are they, they're all vetted, right? Or at least like, you know, I think the yeah, reputable ones will be vetted. vetted. So like, yeah, they'll look at your work and determine, you know, you know, whether or not you're ready to, right, to be right. in there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. in there. And what was the other question? Um, just connecting with people writing cookbooks. So I think, mm. you know, just where to find, cause that is, yeah, that's a, that's a special hurdle for food photographers. Yeah. Do you have, do you have thoughts or experience with that? That's definitely not my specialty, but I would just say, you know, watch anyone who's popular doing recipes online. They're probably going to end up doing some kind of book. Um, and, and then, yeah, I would reach, reach out, out to photographers who've done it. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then I always tell my food clients, go to the farmer's markets and talk people up. Go to farmer's markets all over the country and just talk to people. Ask them who they know who are, um, you know, cooking and things like that. Talk to farmers because farmers will know uh, chefs and that kind of thing. Go to restaurants, see if they're, you know, get to know them because they, you know, chefs may eventually want to do a cookbook. Yeah. I'm all about a brainstorm. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, what else? Anybody got any other questions? I feel like uh, I don't want to keep you for too much longer because I know you're a busy lady. Um, hmm? I got 15 I'm going to leave minutes. that out there. I know. We've got 15 <laughs> more minutes. Oh, um, so oh, I yeah. do have a little treat for everyone who's watching. Ooh. If you want to get the course, I will give you 25% off. My 25% off code is avc-25 for 25% oh, off and deal. the masterclass link again is in my profile and on my website amybcooper.com and you can Love put that it. in the caption if you if you repost the video there you go awesome yeah, yeah. and I saw that um it's only been up for a little while but you've got like a five-star rating and like <gasps> That's several right. dozen people who like already like watched it it's awesome I know. I know. I really put the intention into this that I wanted to help as many people as possible. Like I said, when we first started talking, everyone had the same questions for me. And I wanted to be able to give this to everyone at an affordable price, especially right now, because everyone's yeah. struggling and working on their business and, you know, needing help. And they might not be able to afford a one on one with me. So um, that's the intention that I that I put into it. I love it. It's so generous and really is like so, so packed with information. Cause I think, I think that side of things is really hard, especially for creatives. They're like so excited to make. And then it's like, Oh, but wait, I need to support myself and <laughs> I want to retire someday. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's like, how do I get from here to there? So I think, um, yeah, it's just so many valuable tools for that. Um, a couple more questions. Um, how long have you been in your industry? Um, we talked about that a little bit at the beginning, but, um, I mean, more than 20 years. Wow. I started working at El Decor magazine in 1998. Wow. Oh my gosh. I've been on every possible side of the camera. <laughs> I know it's so true. Um, and there's no one else like me doing a photography course. There's so many, and there's great photography courses that are taught by photographers, but there's that not that I couldn't find any other ones that were taught by our buyer, photo editor, photo consultant rep. So that you're really getting so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So having personally as a, as a photographer gone through my own marketing, but also having been marketed to from so many different areas, um, I wanted to be able to share that knowledge with everyone. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I'm super excited about it. And, um, yeah, if you do go to step to um, if you go to Amy's link, amyvcooper.com, and I think we've got a little post. I know, I don't know. We're we're big fans of Amy, so we've posted a bunch of stuff in our stories <laughs> and everything like that. But we'll share it too. We'll share it in our comments for this um, for this office hours. But um, just even in the first, I mean, one thing I love is just like in that first intro to the masterclass, you really break it down, like all the stuff you're going to share. So there's really um, I don't know, like when I was, when I was watching it, I was like, yep, these are all the questions I would have. And I love it, especially, I think, is it in the intro when you talk about how, like, I wish when I was starting, I knew all this yes. stuff, like these were all the questions I had. Yeah. Yes. I, mean, I just love that. It's just answering and all those questions. Anyone who goes to the course page, you can watch the first two videos for free and you can also see the full course outline. So you kind of get a little taste and I talk You're about making this so easy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, you know, when people there, you know, everyone has to be careful about spending money. So make sure it's right for you. But um, yeah, yeah. I also talk about taking my portfolio to Rolling Stone magazine. <laughs> yes. Like a million years. Yeah. And what that experience was like. So yes, if I and I think about that so much, if I could have given this to myself in 1998, <laughs> or 99, or whenever 2006, whenever I left MTV, I mean, they don't teach this in college. I know? know, I know. And it's, I feel like it's also one of those things that like, you know, 
it's one thing I always feel like it's one thing when my students hear it from me but I feel like the second you say something like you know similar they're like <laughs> oh I don't know I'm just like yeah uh, because because of your background and just like yeah it just um yeah yeah it just it holds a lot of it holds a lot of weight um we have one more question about portfolio reviews um mm -hmm. just asking like you know are they worth it? Like, yes, they definitely can be expensive. Um, and depending on which one you're trying to go to, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it can be, it can be a few hundred dollars at least, but mm -hmm. you know, I think one of the things you're paying for is access to those people because mm -hmm. it is really hard to get face-to-face -face conversations with, um, with a lot of the people that do portfolio reviews at some of the more reputable or, you know, bigger like photo festivals. So yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. 100% worth it. You know, some are going to be better than others, but you never know. You never know who's going to like your work. And even though you might not be the perfect fit for their magazine or whatever, maybe you're meeting with a consultant, you never know who they're going to pass you over to. So when yeah. I do portfolio reviews, I try to shout out everyone I look at so I can, you know, amplify them. But also just literally a few minutes before we got on the phone, I was talking to an agent who wanted who wanted to start looking at product photographers to add a new product photographer to her roster. And I referred her to a woman who I met at Palm Springs Photo Festival last year. So That's awesome. you never know. I, yeah, do any, do as many as you can. It's totally worth it. It's yeah. totally worth it. And if you get one job out of it, one commercial job out of it, you've more than paid for that whole, that whole week at that festival. Yeah. And again, I feel like it's, it, again, it's just kind of like, it's, it's, it's professional practice, you know? I mean, like, you know, some people go to school for photography and some people don't, but I feel like the experience of sitting down with other people and talking through your work and your process and, you know, getting tips and ideas from, from somebody else is always super valuable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would definitely talk. Um, yeah. How, you know. And there's some there, I have a great blog on how to prepare yourself for portfolio reviews. That's right. Videos. I posted yeah. that for my students when they were prepping because I was like, yeah. this is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Set your intentions, get your questions ready, and please send thank you notes to everyone when it's done <laughs> and keep in touch with them. It's a great, it's an opportunity to get people's email addresses and business cards. So yeah, it's totally worth it. Um, and I saw another question down there about. Oh Yeah. What advice would you give to your younger self? <laughs> There's a lot, right? I love that. <laughs> Maybe well, pick the, like one or two big things. The main advice that I would give myself was that it's okay to fail. It's mm. okay to fail. And I was just, I just wrote this down. I was about to post it on, on Instagram. This uh, quote I heard on that podcast I sent you in. Oh, Sunday. yeah. Um, I think this post is by... Um, Seth Green, not Seth, Green, Seth Godin. Um, oh yeah. If, if failure is not an option for you, then neither is success. Ooh. You have to fail to learn. So don't be afraid of it. Ask for what you want is another thing. Ask for what you want. And if someone doesn't return a call or an email, just move on. Just don't, don't overthink it. Just keep going and be consistent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's my advice. Those are good tips. Um, we have one other person, and we talked about this a little bit at the, you know, when we first started talking about portfolio reviews, but um, we had one other question about, about for Palm Springs in particular, um, mm -hmm. just asking what the best format is, um, like a PDF or, you know, having a dedicated page on your website or just having, you know, a curated website. Like um, yeah. for Palm Springs, so, do you have any specific example or um, advice? Well, yes, I would. Well, first go back and rewatch this video because we talk about it a lot. It depends on it depends on the format, the template of your website, whether or not it's easy to see. I do think that if you have a horizontal PDF that you can upload to a Dropbox and then just send that link, um, that's really good. But double check with Palm Springs because they might be requiring people to do PDFs. I feel mm -hmm. like they mentioned that to me earlier in the process where they were going to actually send the reviewers your PDF in advance. So double check with what they're asking for. But yeah, that's a good question. And we, yeah, we did talk about that a little bit earlier. So we'll, um, we'll be posting this, um, 
we're just about out of time because I know. Um, I know, I know. I know. I can't believe. I know. This, this has been was so fun. Let's fun. to you sometime. Let's do. Oh, my gosh. I would love that. Yeah. And um, thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. We were so excited to have you. It was just such, like, a, like, perfect no-brainer to, to invite you Aww. to come join us. Yeah. You're so sweet. <laughs> well, um, I love you, too, and I, I tell everyone about you, and I would not have this course if it weren't for you and Stephanie being Aww. my accountability partners. And sharing that course with me. So thank you. Uh, well, I feel like I owe that. you I'm a so commission. For you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just, um, yeah, we're so proud and excited. And um, yeah, so thanks again, Amy. Um, we'll, we'll post this to our, um, our IGTV channel. And, um, and we'll put in all those links so that people can find all your awesome information and your website. And yeah, get all they can out of um the amazing resource that is Amy V. Cooper. <laughs> Aww, thank you. And happy Friday, everyone. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Or whenever you're watching this, have a great day. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thanks again. Bye.